One of my favorite directors working today, Fede Alvarez, is back with The Girl in the Spider's Web, the sequel, sort of, to Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Anyway, here we go. Let's do this. The Girl in the Spider's Web stars Claire Foy and is directed by Fede Alvarez. What's up, guys? Full disclosure, David Fincher is one of my favorite directors. Uh, and when he did the American adaptation of The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, I was so interested because A, he's one of my favorite directors, and B, the story of Elizabeth Salander is one of the most interesting stories. I think she's one of the most interesting characters of like the last, I'd say, decade at least. Well, I guess 20 years because the original came out more than a decade ago from Sweden. But yeah, it's been like five years since the David Fincher movie. And, you know, I had lost hope because I remember there were rumblings of uh, a new movie. They were going to do the next chapter in that and they weren't even going to do Spider's Web. But then when I heard that they were doing Spider's Web, I was like, oh, my God, what, where did this come from? So they're skipping forward like two books. They're, they're leapfrogging two books. But anyway, here we are. I'm happy that we got another movie with the character, Elizabeth Salander. Um, and Fede Alvarez actually happens to be one of my favorite directors working today. He did Don't Breathe. <laughs> He did the Evil Dead remake, which is one of my favorite remakes. He does have a Fincher style to him. I will say that. But um, so far, I like the movies that he has put out. So where does that leave us with this movie? Let's talk about it. So quick plot synopsis. Beginning of this movie, uh, Elizabeth Salander is doing what she does best. You know, she's kind of a hired gun. And, you know, she does this case at the beginning of the movie because she has a past with an abusive father. So she takes on these cases where her heart is, which is kind of ironic because from an exterior standpoint, she doesn't seem to have a heart. She's very uh, cold in nature, but she wants to protect uh, women and children that are preyed upon. And so anyway, at the beginning of this movie, she accepts this case. And then uh, th there is this file that she becomes curious about, but she can't open it. And it involves the client and the client's child. And then eventually shit hits the fan. And so she it becomes a mission of her to protect the child. Now, guys, um, this is a movie that uh, is right down the middle for me, unfortunately, because I wanted to love this movie. Like I said, I'm a big fan of the character, but it does have some good things. We'll talk about that first, and then we'll get into the cons. First off, Claire Foy. Loved her in Unsane. She does a serviceable job in this, actually. You know, she's not a bad actress at all. I mean, there, there's some great stuff for her to chew on in this movie. I guess my biggest problem is, here we are with the third iteration of the character after Numi Rapace, or is it Ray Pace, and uh, Rooney Mara. And I wish Rooney Mara would have come back and played the character, but I guess Fede Alvarez didn't want that. He wanted his own version of the character because he didn't want to take anything from Fincher's version. And I get that, but you know what? This is still in the same timeline. So why would you change the character? Especially if Rooney Mara is willing to come back, then I think she would have done a, a great job with this because she was fantastic in Girl and the Dragon Tattoo. And I think she could have brought some really great stuff and more... For continuity's sake, you know, I think fans would have enjoyed it more. When I when I saw the trailer for this movie, I saw that they, you know, hired Claire Foy for this. I was like, oh man, th it, it, that sucks because I wanted uh, Rooney Mara to come back. If Rooney Mara didn't do a good job in the last movie, then that's that's one thing. But she did a fantastic job. So yeah. But anyway, Claire Foy does a decent job. And one thing I did love about her in this is they don't make. Uh, Elizabeth out to be this superhero or super heroine because she gets her ass kicked quite a few times in this movie so it grounds her it makes her more relatable and you know there's quite a few instances where she's up shit creek without a paddle speaking of that there's one sequence I actually loved about this movie one of the first sequences uh, where I guess we jump into the second act because something tragic happens and she is drugged and so if she doesn't get out of this situation, then she's going to be in really deep trouble. And the way that scene played out, I thought was excellent, actually. And it's got pure Fede Alvarez all over it because in order to her to get her wits about her, she takes uh, this medication. And so from, a, from the camera's point of view, you see what she's feeling 
when she's trying to get out of the situation and it works very well. I think if they would have maintained that excitement and that momentum throughout this, then it would have been like excellent. Now, a big part of this movie is the relationship between Elizabeth and her sister, Camila. These two characters were separated uh, at a very young age. And so they went completely different directions and they are at odds with each other. So I think a, a family member does make for a good villain, but I feel like given what these two girls went through, uh, you know, they're in their young years, could have been explored a little bit more and they kind of only scratched the surface and i know i'm already jumping into the cons but uh yeah i guess that kind of segued me right into the cons i didn't mind camilla as a character but i wanted more from her speaking of characters that i wanted more from lake Heath stanfeld is one of my favorite actors working uh, uh, in the past couple years he was in get out he was also in um death note Loved him in both those movies. I wanted them to really, you know, utilize him in the best way in this movie, and they really don't, uh, unfortunately. I thought they could have done so much more with him, and I think where it suffers the most is in the script department. I, I don't think they gave him enough dialogue fat to chew on. Really, he's in these situations where Elizabeth is walking him through uh security in an airport and you know he's just a character that's just moving from a to b and that does lead me into my biggest problem with this movie is the plot conveniences and there are a ton of them uh there are so many instances i could think of like a dozen while i was watching this movie where i was like they chose the easiest way out when in reality the situation would probably not have played out like that especially in terms of like security like there's one scene where uh, a character is trying to get through security in an airport and Elizabeth just has a phone planted uh, in an airport with hundreds of people and this character just happens to be at that location at that exact time. I'm calling bullshit. There's a lot of instances like that. I'm not going to go through all of them with you, but there's also one where, you know, she's on a motorcycle and she lands on this frozen lake. And even the CGI version of it looked like she was going to go through the water. But there was just a lot of moments like that. And I know this is a spy movie, and in spy movies, you have a creative license to get away with stuff like that, to move the story forward. But you don't want to insult your audience's intelligence uh, by going the easiest route, which is what they did in this. And at the end of the day, guys, this one just doesn't delve nearly as deep as David Fincher's version. Elizabeth isn't explored nearly as much as that version of the movie. As a matter of fact, Fincher's is on a completely different level than this movie. This is pretty much just a straight up spy action flick. And I think there's so much more you could do with the character of Elizabeth. That's what makes her one of the most interesting characters. And unfortunately, they only scratched the surface. So for that, I'm gonna give this uh, just a straight up humdrum. I had a decent time with it. Pacing wise, it, it moves fast throughout the whole movie. But uh, yeah, those plot conveniences, how it only scratches the surface character-wise. Um, yeah, a lot of missed opportunities in this one, unfortunately. So anyway, guys, what are your thoughts on Girl in the Spider's Web? Let me know down in the comments. Also, be sure to come over to Killer Flicks, where we talk horror all day and every day and on Fridays. We do free fall Fridays. Follow me at Drum Gnomes on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Letterboxd, and now Stardust. If you like what I'm doing, hit that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and Drum Gnome out.